These people, they've not come to steal anything. They've not come to abduct. Rather, they have come to kill and maim. Little kids, there was a three-month-old person that was involved. But God spared that one. Nothing happened to her. There's another less than two-year-old boy. So many people were involved. Even health workers, there's one of our workers, a nurse, that had amputation of the two legs. She went to the church, and with her two legs, she landed in the hospital without legs. The people that died were 40. They were 40. That was the, that was the estimate and the calculation from Mary. This is a terrorist attack. Because we see the body, some of them, they, in fact, they didn't give them any opportunity to survive. They were shooting them on the head, blasting their brain away. If you, you can, of course, people like you can't even go there and withstand the sight of, you know, this human being. Based on the unfortunate incident that took place on Sunday, when you heard about it, what was your reaction? How did you feel? Uh, well, naturally, when I heard of it, I was just looking what happened, how did it happen, what is the motive of the people that came, who are they, where are they coming from, what have they come to do, what, you know? So many things were going through my mind. But when I eventually got here, I saw the victims and the, the, those that are dead. And now, no, I concluded that, look, these people, they've not come to steal anything. They've not come to abduct. Rather, they have come to kill and maim. And uh, that's what they did. They, they not even, they're not sparing anybody. Little kids, there was a three month old person that was involved, but God spared that one. Nothing happened to her. There's another less than two year old boy. So many people were involved. Even health workers, there's one of our workers, a nurse, I had amputation of the two legs. She went to the church and with her two legs, she landed in the hospital without legs. I'm Mrs. Margaret Atta. I'm feeling better now. How did you feel? How do you feel now being able to see your friends and families? I'm very excited. I'm very happy. After your recovery, would you still would you still be able to go to church, you know, being in the presence of the Lord? The grace of God. The grace of God. Because being alive is not by my own making. It's by God. So after leaving the hospital I will still go to church to say thank you, Jesus. It was a dastardly thing. I cannot imagine it. I cannot stay. I can't come to turn with it up to now. So that is my that was my reaction initially. Okay, sir. Can, can you give us um, an estimate or the exact figure to the number of casualties that we had? Yes, thank you. As of today, as of today, we still don't know because they keep on coming one after the other. You know, there are some of them that went to private hospital. There are some of them that went to native person, you know, to remove bullets, you know. So, but as of today, we had the 131 people that were involved. Everybody who lost and their lives? The, the people that died were 40. They were 40. That was the... 
That was the estimate and the calculation from here. Though we are having feelings, we're having information that out of those that were in one hospital in uh, Akure, they said the body has been transported to uh, St. Louis Hospital and one in one private hospital here in uh, Owo that the body has been transferred to, to FMC. So that leads up with 38, okay. you know. We were looking if you remove those two from 40. That means because they were already captured in those in the hospitals at St. Louis and uh, so 38, we were looking at we counted 40 initially based on the report. But now the latest report is that we're having 38. That's the, that's the final report that was actually counted. Well, because we had to go for the for the number one by one by one. So, and we found 38. So that is the, that is the thing, 131 out of which 38 died. It's, 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 ma it's massive. Yes, yeah. So being, being the commissioner for health here in Owo, what are some of, some of the things that you have put in place between Sunday and now in order to give the survivors, survivors their health back? in order for some of them to be able to walk again on their feet? Yes, uh, the, immediately the thing happened. The Mr. Governor was in Abuja. Was, he was heading the security committee and the APC convention. It was that day that he flew back to, to Ondo State and since that time, he's been coordinating response for the survivor of the, of the victim. So the governor has done a lot, directed that, uh, you know, materials, consumables, drugs, even money. Money was given. The governor gave each of the, of the victims that were on the hospital's bed 100,000 each is, is huge. Aside from, aside from the, the consumable, their needs, they don't need to pay anything, including feeding and everything. So the patients were, take, were, were taken care of, you know, and the governor was coming every day, almost every day to see them. And he was receiving, you know, visitors, you know, to see them, the vice president was here. Uh, Ashwaju Amen Bola Tinubu was here. The minister of uh, interior was here. The governor of uh, Ekiti State, who doubled as the as the chairman of the of the governors forum in Nigeria, was here. Uh, Senator Ibukule Amosu was here. Uh, uh, engineer Shirima Kinde, the governor of Oyo State, was here. Uh, uh, His Excellency Oyetola, the, the governor of the state of Osun, was here. So many people came, and the governor was coordinating them around, you know, receiving them. So, on, on our part here, we'll be meeting the uh, EOC. Mass Casualty EOC has been activated with the technical support from WHO. The country head of mission and the country rep of World Health Organization relocated to this place immediately after the Dastardly Act. He relocated, he was there for many days, giving support, and they brought a lot of consumables, materials, drugs, you know, for their comfort. So they have been very wonderful. And uh, many other organizations, you know, have been involved 
in, you know, giving, you know, so many things to, to this person. Only uh, uh, recently that the governor directed that some beds, you know, maybe 200 in number, be given to FMC St. Louis and General Hospital or War, you know, to take care of, you know, the space, you know, acute uh, shortage of space, beds, you know. So it's, it's been very huge. We've been holding meetings every day with partners, you know, WHO, uh, UNICEF, you know, uh, uh, the Catholic uh, Hospital St. Louis, you know, workers from uh, uh, FMC, and of course the Ministry of Health, you know, the State Minister of Health, who has been coordinating all of these activities. So I think we've learned a lot of lessons from, from this. You know, it's not, it's not an easy thing to respond to this kind of thing. But with all of these people, we are responding very well. And with the, with the leadership of Mr. Governor, it's been very wonderful that we are, we are coping. So I also learned that there will, be, there will be a mass burial, sometimes Friday. Why the choice of a mass burial? Is it that some families cannot recognize bodies of their family members? Well, I understand what the, the, the so-called mass burial is. It's not as if they are going to dump them, you know, in one uh, this thing. It's, it's actually a befitting barrier. That's what they're talking about. Every single body was recognized by name, by everything. So there's no mix-up about that, you know. So the mass barrier that, you know, we're thinking yeah. about is not, it's not the one they do for people who who they can identify their body or abandon people in the hospitals or so is decent decent barrier, befitting barrier. Actually the 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 families they are requesting for their body to be taken to their different you know country homes and so so but nobody is going to stop them. But the state too you know, with the Catholic uh, mission, they are going to have a, a memorial park for them. Even if the bodies are not there, they have headstones for them. They have their names, you know, written in, in the memory of those people that and love their life. Oh, yes. And it's, and it's so it's wonderful. That is great. So for so many years to come, you know, those things will be there. And it's going to be a very wonderful thing, beautiful thing. So, so that is uh, what the state is not, it's not as if it's a, a mass barrier of dumping people on the ground because you can't recognize them or because they don't have, you know, relatives. No, that's not what we're thinking of. A few days back, we also gathered that um, some of the, some of these perpetrators were caught and were handed over to the police to be taken to Akure. But some people do not believe that those are the actual people who carried out, you know, that um, that attack on Sunday. What can you say about that? Well, I can't uh, comment on that because I don't know. Honestly speaking, I don't know. Maybe people were caught and uh, they were handed over. We've, we've not, we've not had that officially. The rumors is here and there that some people were caught. Maybe they were the people that did it or not. We still don't know. I can't actually make comments on that, please. So before you go, so many, speaking with some of the survivors, some of them are worried about their security in the states. What can you say to assure them? that the government is working on securing their lives, their properties, and their families. Yeah, thank you very much. I think uh, one thing, Mr. Governor, in, in sure, and that is, is, is trending, is the, is the security of life and property in the state. Don't forget that aside from the other security agencies here in the state, 
there is this formidable Amotekun core that are all over the place, you know, all over the place, strengthening the security of the state. So they are still on ground. In fact, Mr. Governor has given instruction to the to the uh, the core commandant of Amotekun to recruit more personnel. So I can assure them that this kind of thing, yes, it came. You know, very unfortunate, but I believe and I hope that such will never happen again because the security is all over the place. We are wiser. The, the uh, intelligence is, is all over the place. We'll put on more, you know, security things. We'll, we'll, be, we'll carry down intelligence. We'll look at what we can do to secure life and properties in the state. Everybody should be conscious too. And that's the information. Be very, very conscious of what happens, you know, in your environment. Be suspicious. The high level of suspicion is very important. You know, look at, do I know these people? These people that, what are they doing in my environment? Suspicious movement should be reported immediately to the security agencies. So I believe we are doing very well. Such of this will never happen again this day. Thank you. What if this is a, it was politically planned or it is just bandits who came together to attack the church? Well, I cannot, I cannot say because uh, that, that conclusion will be hasty on my part if I say this is political this is uh, economic, this is, but we know what we can put together is that this is a terrorist attack. Because we see the body, some of them, they, in fact, they didn't give them any opportunity to survive. They were shooting them on the head, blasting their brain away. If you, you can, of course, people like you can't even go there and uh, we stand the sight of, you know, this human being, what they did to them. Eh? So, for me, it is a terrorist attack. But I don't know the motive. Maybe those terror were procured to do a political bid or to do an ethnic thing or to do whatever. But I can, I can tell you for sure that this is a terrorist attack.